Good evening, everyone, and welcome to tonight's first adventure, which I'm entitling Big Hand. Uh, before we get into it, as always, we are going to take a moment and introduce our characters. So without further ado, let's get right into it. We got Throom uh, rejoining us tonight. Uh, welcome back, Throom. Ah, yes, hello. It's good to be back on the material plane. Uh, it's wonderful to have you here. How have you been? What have you been up to lately? Uh, uh, there was some crazy, crazy things going on. I don't know how much you heard about all the chaos in the Carnival of Souls, but it's got very, very crazy. Yes, I yes, think I, I, ended I did up hear. Some other plane for a while. Uh, things uh, things do seem to be settling down. Um, normally, the Carnival of Souls, at least, you know, everyone in the world was not at stake. It was just Bartholomew's adventures. Things were a little bit more contained than before. Uh, is it strange to kind of come back into a world that seems to know very little about the uh, the magnitude of the danger that you just faced? Well, I'm sure that the stories shall get around eventually. Indeed, I've, I have no yeah. doubt that they will. Uh, but uh, how are you doing? Are, are you holding up okay after that? Are you, you know, have you been finding some time to relax, some room time? Uh, not quite as much as I'd like. Mm -hmm. uh, well, back in the saddle already, it looks like. Uh, yes. Already, already back out there. I guess, you know, the life of an adventurer is never dull. Um, regardless, it's, it's nice to have you back, Thrum. Thank you very much. And of course. Uh, next up, we have joining us uh, as well, Taryn of Silver Blood. Welcome, Taryn. Thank you. It is uh, good to be out and about in the daylight for once. Yes. Um, you don't tend to uh, spend a lot of time in the day, I take it, Taryn? Uh, for the most part, no. I, I do love the, the moon's light. It's mm -hmm. just also nice to get some of that. Uh, well, I don't want this to be taken the wrong way, but the sight of the cloud. <laughs> I, um, I, I'm not going to, I know exactly where your particular loyalties lie, Taryn. Uh, I'm not going to misinterpret that. Although I'm sure there's several individuals that already have. Um, now, Taryn, uh, tell me, what have you been up to uh, in the last couple of weeks? Is there anything new going on in, in your, uh, over in the, uh, the Silver Bloods Cathedral or anything happening there? Well, not exactly new, but... We, I've been doing a personal investigation myself, because there are times when Lance just doesn't quite seem to be acting himself. Hmm. Oh, yes, I, I see. Uh, Lance has been acting a, a bit out of character. Uh, and you said it's just from time to time? It's not always, uh, not always happening? Well, so, sometimes he'll be quite distant, and other times he'll be the exact same that I remember. Yes, as you've known him. That is very strange. Have, have you come to any conclusions yet, or is this still just an ongoing investigation as to why this might be happening? I'm worried that he may be taking care of matters personally on something that he perhaps should seek help with, but mm. it is not my place to say that. Yes, this is, uh, well, I hope for his health and don't end up kind of burning your own health at the expense of uh, worrying. You gotta care for yourself as well, Taryn. I will do my best. Very good. Uh, welcome back. Thank you for joining us tonight. Next up, we have once more Dear Granny Serial Massacre. Hello, Granny. Hello there. Uh, Granny, how are you? Uh, how are you this fine day? I'm doing quite well, thank you. Yes, you're very good. Uh, tell me, what have you been up to lately, uh, Granny? Are you settling down from the Carnival of Souls as well? Yes, yes. It's been quite cold, so I've been spending my spare time knitting scarves for for people who. Uh, are you much of a baker, Granny? I'm a knitter. Uh, you mostly knit, not uh, not so much on the uh, the cooking side of things. No, no, no what talent for for cooking, unfortunately. Yeah. Just knit okay. romancing, knit Fair romancing, knit knit chromancy. Yes, but of course. Uh, now, <laughs> Granny, uh, I was going to ask, what, what are you knitting right now? What's your current project? Oh, just scarves for, for people who need it. Uh, do you just give your scarves to just, you know, you, you give them away for free? Or do you have specific people that you knit them for? Or Well, 
the ordinary ones I, g I just give away for free. Though oh. occasionally ones that have magical attributes do make it into Bartholomew's shop from time to time. That's uh, what's very generous of, generous of you to donate your time and your efforts to uh, keep people warm during the upcoming cold months. It's very sweet, Granny. Uh, and, uh, well, Granny, also, thank you very much for uh, joining us tonight. It's good to have you back. And last, but of course not least, we have joining us a, a brand new character here in the land of D&D time. We have uh, Vodius. Am I pronouncing that correctly? Vodius? That's acceptable. Um, well, good evening, uh, Vadius. Uh, tell me, um, tell me a little bit about yourself. Uh, who are you? What brings you to the land of D&D &D time? What skills do you kind of have to offer as part of Bartholomew's adventuring troop? Well, from where I come from, I patrol the hive and all of the Florins and bunny folk that live beneath it. I came... Uh, to help guard one of the Zuzips that reside in that area. And together we stumbled across a place that was very odd, uh, some sort of a haunting event. And mm. unfortunately, the Zuzip I was escorting was killed. Apparently she had to deliver a message to another Zuzip. Or, no, it wasn't a Zuzip. No, it was a bunny folk friend, though the, f the name escapes me. Ah, uh, I still, I grieve the loss of the person that I was sworn to protect. And in my own way, I learned a lesson that day. Mm. And I am here now in order to help guard and protect and find the other Zuzips that have gone astray from the colony. Well, it seems like you are uh, an individual of a great conviction, Vagius. Um And just for clarity, um, you are, of course, a uh, a bee therian or a were bee. I don't I don't know which term you would prefer. Those are correct. Mm. Either will work. Um, as a were bee, I guess it makes sense. Do you have a um a close relationship with not only the Zuzips but just the uh, the Blossomer Florins on the whole? Uh, I imagine there's some some symbiosis there. That is correct, and why we have helped to cultivate the Zuzips. However, it would appear that one some time ago had gone rogue and had wandered out this way. And since then, she's been creating others. And from my initial investigation, it would even appear that this bunny folk for whom I don't remember a record has even established some sort of a zoo zip network. It's fascinating. I'm not sure what to think about it just yet. Mm. Well, there's, uh, I'm sure there's a lot for you to process as now coming into Bartholomew's Adventuring Troop. So, uh, Valdius, I wish you only success uh, and best of luck in all of your endeavors as you come into your first adventure this evening. I will work as hard as I can in order to succeed and never lose another person again. Very good. Uh, in that case, let us bring us into tonight's adventure. Uh, where you begin, you stand near the outskirts of the Wildemode. Uh, the largest forest in the lands of D&D time, some of the uh, points at the center of it uh, approaching more dense jungle even than forest. Um, but you are, as I said, on the outskirts where the trees are perhaps a little bit thinner uh, and things aren't quite as wild and untamed. There are some small villages around here, um, smaller towns and things, uh, and you are headed this way because you are intended to meet up with an individual by the name of Rusty Pockets. Uh, apparently this Rusty Pockets character um, is a forest ranger, uh, a wilderness explorer uh, around these regions and needs you to come to their cabin uh, somewhere in the woods around this region in order to, well, help them out with whatever it is that they need help with. Um, you've been walking along kind of a dirt path here on the outskirts uh, and eventually you reach the sign that Bartholomew told you to look for. A simple wooden sign that points and gestures into the forest along an even less well-trod dirt path. Um, you follow that for some time and kind of go through some twists and turns. Uh, the trees and the foliage here are pretty overgrown, but there is sign that people have walked this path, you know, recently enough for it not to be, you're not cutting your way through, but it's not necessarily an easy track. 
um, until eventually you begin to see uh, out of the woods, uh, and you're obviously pretty close to it, the trees are starting to get a little bit denser. Uh, you can see an old wooden lodge uh, set up, and you can see the, uh, the smoke rising out of the chimney therein. Uh, and sitting in a rocking chair there on the steps is a human. They're kind of sitting with their uh, sitting in kind of a rocking chair out on the porch. They have a big, big bushy gray beard uh, and long frizzy gray hair that kind of stretches. They look on the older side, maybe 55, 60 years old. Uh, and while they're kind of sitting there in their chair, they have flung over their shoulder that they're holding on to what looks like a, a butterfly net large enough to catch a horse. Uh, and as you kind of get closer, the voice kind of calls out to all of you. Uh, good day, all of you. What are you doing out here in the forest? Campers? More agents. Adventurers, actually. Grannies. Well, that's good news, as I imagine that you must be the adventurers that I heard. That my name is uh, Rusty Pockets. Nice to meet all of you. Y'all looking for me? That we are. Oh, good. Why don't you come on in? Uh, get yourselves warm. Uh, it's uh, starting to get a little bit brisk in the woods this time of year. Uh, and he does have kind of a well, uh, just kind of a, a thick uh, coat upon uh, that he's currently wearing. It seems to be made of uh, perhaps bear skin. Uh, and Rusty Pockets steps on up into the room, um, into the, uh, the cabin beyond. Do you guys want to follow him in? Yes. Vroom just watches his head as he goes through. <laughs> Yes, uh, the um, yeah. he leaves that big net outside. The, the cabin's definitely not meant for a, uh, a loxodon, an elephant, uh, human hybrid such as yourself. Um, but you step in, and the interior of it is relatively cozy. You know, there's a, a fire kind of blazing, um, kind of lighten up the interior of the space. Sunlight's still kind of drifting in as well. Um, but beyond the regular trappings that you'd expect, tables, chairs, you know, food and supplies, um, there are a number of other things. There are trophies of, of various animals. You can see there is uh, what appears to be the, the head of a deer mounted on the wall at one point, uh, as well as a number of different bows and uh, kind of like crossbows of, of various sizes and things. Um, you can see there's a few different tusks. There's a, there's a few racks of what looks like meats that are hanging and drying over here. Um, and then like some very large uh, looking bear traps that are just piled in a big jumble in the corner. Um, he kind of steps in and, and begins pouring a, a cup of coffee for himself. Uh, any y'all interested in a cup of coffee? Uh, might be out there for a while. We're going on a hunt, you see. No, thank you. It does things to Therians. Yes. Uh, would you happen to have any tea instead, perhaps? Uh, tea? No. Uh, I ain't got anything like that. I can crumble up some leaves, put them in hot water. It's about all I got. Thurm, at well, the mention of going on a hunt, visibly starts to simmer inside and look very disapproving back at Rusty Pockets. Yeah. Uh, and he kind of looks, um, he, he looks back at you and he sees it uh, as he kind of pours his coffee. Uh, he looks over at you, Granny, coffee? I oh, take sure. I'll, I'll take some. Yeah, oh, good, good. Yeah, you gotta keep yourself live. Uh, what's going on with you? Um, what's your name? Looks at you, Throom. I am Throom, and... Exactly like what do you mean by a hunt? Hey, you look a little bit pale. Uh, if you're a scared type, uh, I don't know if you're going to be any good out here. Yeah, we're, we're hunting after a uh, creature. Now, tell me, any of y'all ever heard the legend of Big Hand? No, I am rather new to these parts, though I would sit and listen. Yeah, well... Big Hand's sort of a, uh, well, a myth around these parts. Um, big creature. They say some kind of misconnection, something between the primordial human and the, uh, well, the human of today. A strange creature caught kind of betwixt time 
and people been saying they've been finding, uh, you know, seeing Big Hand around from time to time, you know, notifiably, of course, by his very large hands, but no one ever really sees Big Hand, and, well, everyone thinks it's false. Well, except for me. I know there's a Big Hand. Now, I was just a boy, maybe five or six years old, rocking around the woods, but I saw the creature, hands the size of me and you, and... Well, I ran away as fast as I could, but ever since then, I've been telling people no one believed me. Well, lately, as it crops up from time to time, there's been some big hand sightings again. Now, usually I wave them off, but there's been too many of them for it to be false. Now, if you're worried, it uh, seems like you grew a little bit pallid at the idea of, of killing them. Now, we're uh, after the capture. I just want to get proof of them. You see, I got this here photo box I bought from one of them Trigo gnomes. Uh, and he holds up what looks like a, a, a trigonometric camera. Um, it lets me capture moments in vision. Um, you see, I've, I've gone after him before. Over on the wall, uh, you can see there's a bunch of photos of maybe this creature, um, but all of them, it's just like one of them is just the edge of a hand, and it's got a bunch of hair kind of coming off of it. Uh, and, you know, another one, it's like so far in the distance, it's just like a black dot in between two trees really far away. I've been trying to capture a photo of this big hand for a long time, but we're going to catch him out there in my big net that I got, or, you know, however you all see fit to catch him. And I'm going to get a solid picture, and I'm going to show everyone that I ain't the crackpot they seem to think I am. Uh, as I'm looking around with my watcher's eye, does uh, th this person may live alone in the woods, and, and that's fine as if he's law-abiding. Though, uh, is it, does anything give off a hint of, you know, like poaching or, you know, uh, of other suspicious activity? And I will um, also ask him for a cup of uh, sugar water, if he has. Sugar water, I can do. Um, yeah, just uh, fetch some from the stream this morning. Uh, go ahead and make an investigation. Um, check as, as you're kind of looking around. Uh, also perception, if you prefer. Either one's fine. Um, <clears throat> yeah, as you're looking out the, uh, looking around the area, uh, this individual, you can tell they are a hunter. Um, and looking at things, they, um, they definitely track and, and kill animals around here. Uh, but from the things that you're looking at, not a lot of them appear to be um, but nothing here seems to be animals that are, you know, protected or that are things that, you know, shouldn't be hunted. Uh, you know, it's all things like deer, there is some bear. Also, based on the, um, the kind of, like, sides of beef and stuff that he has drying, or sides of, you know, kind of dried gamey meats, uh, it looks like he has at least a fair bit of respect for the animals that he's hunting. Like, he's not just... This person doesn't seem like they're sport hunting. It seems like they're hunting more just to live out here in the woods. Okay, thank you. Um, with the, uh, with the 19 there. Yeah, so that's the, uh, the vibe that you get. Um, but yeah, they, um, are kind of, like, packing some things up. They also seem to be packing a quick lunch, um, and, and look over here. Can I get any of anything, uh, to eat? Uh, I got mostly meat, some breads, I got your sugar water right here. Uh, but I suggest we get a move on. Uh, it tends to come out around twilight, is what people have been saying. Um, you know, some of the folks around town seen them. Uh, I've been looking around for some of the signs, and I found a few. I can show you what I've found so far. Is there anything about these woods that uh, perhaps I should know about? I'm very mobile, you see, and I'll I'll kind of flex my wings and give them a little a little test mm -hmm. buzz to to fan things. You know, any dangers, uh, things that might uh, live in the branches or otherwise interfere with my movement as I climb or fly. Um, around the area that we're going to be looking, um, there are birds, um, nothing too large. Uh, you go in deeper, you're going to start finding the occasional peritone. Uh, you know, nothing like a rock settles around here, nothing that big. But you're going to find some larger birds around there. Um, you know, uh, beehives aren't uncommon. Uh, I don't know if that's something, I mean, that seems like something you might be equipped to, uh, notice and avoid. Um... You know, you get in deeper, you might have to start worrying about some, uh, well, there's been a strange crop of predators hopped up on some of the trees in the deep woods around here, but we ain't close enough running into any of those. Your cooperation is appreciated. You stand out among many who would call themselves more civilized than you. 
Uh, well, thank you very much. I like to think that I got a well, a fair piece of life carved out in the woods. Uh, but well, let's get a move on before it gets too dark. Uh, and, yep, gathers up his net. You see him put together a bag of a few miscellaneous uh, traps and snares and things uh, and begins huffing it outside the house. Um, and all right, I can lead you the way to the last thing I saw, but uh, from there, um, I imagine some of you have some um, well, some tracking abilities. He's got his camera kind of tied on a rope around his neck. Um, perhaps you can uh, help us locate our destination and our quarry. Uh, I'll do what I can. This isn't my most practiced landscape, but I should be able to make do in a pinch. That's what I like to hear. Uh, let's um, let's get to it. Uh, and he begins stepping out and walking into the forest for the night. Um, you guys all begin to follow, I assume. Is there anything you guys want to do to prepare or uh, or talk about with him before you low, or are you all ready to go? Um, did he mention, I, I'm sorry if I missed it, did he mention some sort of a, a diet or a bait that we're using, or are we just going on like a photo safari to try and catch um, it out in the wild? Just... Uh, he implied that... Um, uh, he implied that you were going on more of a photo so far. He said he had found some evidence that he's going to take you to, oh, okay. uh, and then right, see so if I'm... you could um, find something from there. Okay. Um, but yeah, um, you begin walking through the Wildewoad. Uh, it's pretty quick. Um, you find yourselves off of the beaten trail. Uh, Rusty here seems fairly confident uh, as he's walking through that he knows where he is in the forests around here. Uh, and, you know, you... You know, he's, he's seeming to guide you without too much difficulty, but the foliage is thick. Uh, the area would probably be considered a difficult terrain uh, that you're passing through. Uh, and eventually you make your way to a point, uh, and he kind of holds up his hand. He goes, all right, right up here. This is the uh, this is the last time I saw anything like signs of him. Uh, and kind of points uh, down, and there's... Uh, a section here of forest that's been kind of cleared out. It looks like at one time it might have been a, uh, it, it might have been a pond, but it's mostly been relatively dried up and it's now just a big like chunk of mud uh, here in the middle of the forest. And uh, as you're looking out in it, there is a very obvious um, sign here in the mud. Um, there appear to be massive, well, they look like handprints um, that are kind of moving out at a fair distance on either side uh, and then walking kind of in the middle of them are what look like still large but not exceptionally large footprints uh, that are kind of moving the middle almost like in the pattern like a gorilla might move uh, that seem to track through the mud here uh, and he kind Unusual. of poised well yeah well that's uh well, that's about the size and shape of the big hand. Uh, such a thing is, well, not common around these parts, I'll tell you that. I've never seen a creature, uh, be a bear or beast, that leaves anything like this. Uh, so that's why I'm thinking that we might be on the right track around here. Um, and he kind of points up. Um, he he kind of points up and, and leads over to the way. Now, if you see up there the, uh, the handprints, they uh, they lead further onwards because uh, after it kind of leaves the mud, you can see it's like tracking now almost footprints out of mud through the forest and like areas where the forest is disturbed. Um, the creature that made these is obviously pretty large and it's definitely like leaving imprints in, in the brush and things. Um, and he goes, if any of y'all would like to uh, well, lead the way, perhaps we can follow that trail. Um, this is as far as I went last time. Uh, now, I know, uh, well, I think this might be the way the big hand went, but I didn't really see fit to follow it without, well, anyone else with me to protect me, as this is obviously a formidable creature. That was a wise decision on your part, sir. Now, how long ago was it that you found these? Um... I found these tracks two days ago now, um, but I found them second hand. I came out here. Um, I told you some of the other folks, there's been other sightings of the big hand around here. Some people saying they, they saw it themselves, big giant thing, uh, but 
just like myself, a lot of those folks are getting laughed at and being told they're telling t stories at a school. One of them led me out to here. Hmm. But these could be very old. Um, they told me they, uh, well, they told me they found them about three days ago. Yeah, but I don't know how old they are. Um, and, uh, if you want to, um, make a survival or investigation check, you can kind of try and, um, you can kind of try and judge that if you'd like. 22, oof. Um, you are looking over and, and you lean down and through them, you start to kind of, like, inspect the mud, uh, and... The mud here is is pretty damp, um, and the like you can see in places where the uh, the handprints are starting to kind of like fold in because, like I said, it is it is mud, not just like dry kind of earth. Uh, and from kind of your own knowledge of just around the land of D and D time, it hasn't rained. Um, it's been about five days since it rained, so. If this is still wet, uh, you imagine a lot of water probably collected here. If it was able to like make an imprint on something that was probably normally like dry cracked mud, it had to have been within the last five days at least. Uh, it's not like an ancient footprint, but it's not necessarily like super fresh. All right. Um, do you like convey that? What are you gonna say about it? I, uh, <clears throat> so, Thrun kind of is like, seems like whenever he was here, it wasn't, Particularly recent. Who this may he may have moved into some other area, but he should be on the lookout just to be safe. Hmm. Uh, all right. Um, well, while the party is looking down on the ground, uh, can I can I zoom up a little bit and see a, a, a character like this might like use the trees or the branches? Can I check the upper brush and not just the underbrush to see? if there's any evidence of uh, manipulation there. Absolutely. Go ahead and make me a survival or investigation check. Your choice. Investigation. All right. Looking around, um, you begin glancing from a, well, a bee's eye view. I was about to say a bird's eye view, but a bee's eye view, I guess. Uh, as you fly upwards and begin just kind of scoping the uh, scoping the brush around here. And you are seeing signs of branches that are uh, broken and kind of torn away in strange places on the, uh, the higher grounds up here. Uh, and as you kind of fly around and, and look, uh, you actually see a treetop at one point um, that looks like it was crushed inwards by like a powerful force. Uh, the tree itself is a little bit rotten out, like it's been eaten away by termites and is, is pretty old, long dead, uh, but it would still take an immense amount of like grip strength and pressure and well, presumably a pretty big hand to actually just like crush the top of the tree. Um, you can see even like a couple of spots where it almost, not like a perfect print, uh, but where it looks like fingers might have like grasped um, you're kind of up above, kind of noting this while, uh, while Rusty's on the ground, kind of pointing out, yeah, the, uh, the mud prints do, um, uh, the, the mud prints do kind of lead around this way, so, um, uh, I'll, uh, well, shall we, uh, proceed? Uh, and he kind of looks around, where's that, uh, where'd that bee fellow go? Was it Vaudio, Vaudios, Vaudios? I believe he's checking the sky at the moment. He kind of calls up to you. What are you doing up there? It's, uh, you're not going to be able to see much, I imagine, from a bird's eye. Forest pretty dense around here. Uh, but I have. In fact, the density of the forest has allowed me to discern. And I'll go and share the information that you gave me. Yes. And he kind of looks up and he kind of points it out. It's a little tough to see from the ground area. But he looks up. My God. That thing's a... Uh... Well, that thing's a powerful beast. Well, we'll, uh, we'll keep a safe distance if we're gonna photograph it. Or, well, hopefully trap it. Uh, and, um, he gets ready to continue onwards. Um, and, uh, begins kind of going forward and, you know, just following the mud and the, and the broken brush along the ground. Uh, would any of you 
like to, um, or would anybody like to assist him in like tracking his way through the forest uh, to make sure he's staying on top of the uh, the, uh, the yes. trail properly? Yeah, yeah that, that seems like a good idea. All right. Uh, any of you who would have a tool to do that, be it a survival check or some other way to help, uh, you may do so. All right. Um, this is, uh, for you, Taryn, this is a little bit outside of your range. You know, you're a, you're a spider therian, so you're able to get up into the trees a little bit and, and get, you know, there's some easier ways to navigate for you, uh, but this isn't necessarily your general domain. But Thrum, you're an individual that's very comfortable in the wood, uh, and there are times when Rusty gets a little bit off course and you are able to steer him back in the right direction uh, until... Eventually, um, through your guidance, uh, you find your way to um, not much of a uh, not much of a clearing, but a small enough one, and kind of over on the edge of it, uh, there appears to be um, the ruins of a cabin, uh, another cabin in the woods. It's very uh, obviously very old and kind of like uh, beaten down. There's a couple of places where the um, the logs and the ceiling have fallen in. Doesn't look like anyone's lived here in an incredibly long time. Uh, Rusty, as he sees it. Uh, kind of calls out, oh, wow, I hadn't, I hadn't seen this before. Never been quite this uh, deep out in the woods on any of my hunts before. Uh, it's getting nearer, um, it's getting nearer to twilight now. Uh, and you, um, you kind of see slumped down in front of it, uh, almost more conspicuous than the cabin. Uh, you can see what looks like the remains of a moose. Um, a very large animal uh, that has been toppled and is uh, just kind of lying dead on the ground in front of this cabin. Uh, Rusty kind of walks up to it, um, kind of goes over to it and starts to get pretty fresh. Uh, probably died sometime this, uh, well, seems like it died sometime in the last 24 hours at least. Uh, looks around to the rest of you. I mean, what do you think could have brought down a game like this, dragged it over into this space, save for our quarry? I can't think of anything. I have unfortunately had to work murder scenes, and so I will do my best to investigate and see if there are any more clues as to what could have felled such a mighty beast. Uh, uh, please, like please do. Particular? Yeah. yeah, go ahead and give it another round. Seven. All right. Yeah, you're looking over it, and it's um, it's tough to tell. Uh, it has um, definitely its its legs are a little bit broken, uh, and it looks also a bit emaciated. Um, but you're not seeing any kind of like visual signs. Like there there isn't like the last like on the tree or anything. It doesn't look like this was kind of crushed with maybe the same grip strength that you saw on the tree, um, but. It does look like some like bludgeoning was done to it. A little, little bit tough to tell. You're not, you're not certain. Room would like to see if he can determine a cause of death. Sure. Somehow. Um, I mean, you're welcome to make um, also a investigation check, or you could make a nature check if you would like. Medicine would also be applicable. I, I guess I could make a medicine check. Through medicine. All right. Um, Granny, you also. Um, you also kind of make a menacing trip. Both of you begin kind of looking it over and, and trying to get, uh, trying to get a better idea. Um, just like, um, just like Vadius put out, uh, definitely their legs were broken, this moose. Um, and there was uh, a lot of like blunt trauma dealt to the side of the body. Um, and it looks, uh, it, it looks like it was like repeatedly struck in the side of the body. Um, in a manner that's like almost excessive, uh, like probably more than it would have taken to uh, bring down the creature. Uh, there's like a lot of broken ribs um, that you're kind of getting as, as you're feeling around the side of the creature and uh, Rusty's going, uh, kind of looks over at you, well, I don't know, this seems like good a place as any to me. If, uh, if our quarry was planning on eating this thing, then, uh, well, he's probably coming back for it at some point, yeah? I could set a, a snare, at, you know, to 
in the event that it comes back. Uh, well, that's a good idea. Um, if it's going after this thing, uh, well, we set a snare, we set all kinds of traps, whatever traps you think will work. Um, I got some supplies here, and he begins kind of... Um, ooh, you have... Is that all a snare spell? Yes, it is a snare oh, spell. Oh, cool. Uh, how does this... Oh, I, I like this. All right, cool. Um, yeah. So you're setting up a, uh, a snare on the moose. Uh, he goes, you got any other uh, stuff you think? Like maybe, I don't know, we could uh, put together... We got this, this kind of cabin here. I don't know if we got time to construct much. Uh, box on a stick, that sort of thing. Hmm. Uh, as he's looking around all of you, you think that'll suffice? I don't, I don't know, big creature. You think that's going to have the uh, power to grab onto it? Well, unless it's bigger than a large creature, it should work. Well, it's a large creature, I can tell you that. Uh, no snare I've ever sna said I think would have the power to pull it in. Uh, he doesn't seem well, to quite understand that you're magic. <laughs> Well, it's a magical snare. I mean, it works on large creatures. As long as it steps, as long as it steps within the circle, the snare will suspend it three feet in the air. I could also wait on the cabin rooftop, and once I hear your snare triggered, I could drop a net on it to be extra sure. I could always cast another snare on the roof as well, I guess. Wait, a snare on the roof well it's on the ground i don't know if a snare on the roof would do any good but... well it, well, the, well the top of the roof could count as a floor i suppose well if it, i guess if it came from that direction but then it would see uh our spider friend probably first uh, i guess it's not a bad idea and you say you're gonna get ready with a net uh, yes, sir. I got my net, too. Uh, and he's got his big, he's got his, still got his massive, basically, child's butter, butterfly net sized up for a Bigfoot. Uh, and of course, by Bigfoot, I mean a big hand. Uh, and he, uh, he kind of leans back and goes, all right, I guess you got your snare. And if it snares the thing, I'll run out with my net and you got your net. Um, you got any kind of trapping types of moves? Oh, he looks at you, Vadius, and throws. I am capable of may have something. Pals. If you have a spare net or will be handing me yours, I can wait until the proper time and drop the net as a surprise. Uh, I'm that's actually stealthy. a good idea. It's actually a good idea. And he hands you the uh, the net. That way I can be ready with my camera to take a nice close up picture. There's something rather ironic about a large bee holding a large net. <laughs> he looks up at you. <laughs> good one. That's a good one. Um, I know I don't mean to be rude. He looks at you through, but you definitely stick out a bit. And Thrun will just <clears throat> and Thrun will I I shrug. I can try to hide somewhere. I guess you want to hide over with me? Sure, I can. Try it. Maybe better if I find somewhere where I might have a little bit more cover. I do seem to be a tiny bit larger than you are. Um, all right. Uh, why don't you? Uh, um, maybe you can duck right into that cabin right there. That sounds like a good idea. And um, before I, before Thrum goes into the cabin, he peers inside to make sure that there's. Nobody, no one or nothing hiding inside. Um, all right, yeah, you, you take a moment of caution to be certain that there's nothing going to jump out at you as you come in. Uh, a few uh, a few forest creatures, a couple squirrels kind of duck and run out of the place, but nothing that, uh, nothing threatening in there, it seems. Uh, and with that, you all take a brief moment and kind of pause yourselves and begin... I would uh, also like to hide if possible so that I won't give away our plan just standing around here. Uh, yes, absolutely. Well, I'm going to have everyone probably make me a stealth check in just a moment. Um, and actually, that moment is now. Could all of you make me stealth checks? So just to get everything under wraps. Uh, <laughs> uh, Vadius, you are above in the... Um, 
Uh, you are above in the trees, kind of looking down from above? That is correct. All right. Uh, and Granny, where are you hiding? Are you going to just go, go and kind of like behind a tree nearby watching it? Or are you getting into the cabin? Or Granny's going to hide in the cabin. All right. You and Throom are both in the cabin there. Uh, and Taryn, you're on the roof? Yes. Uh, and uh, just kind of like duck dead down flat as you can, I would imagine. Pretty much. Just, yeah, there's uh... there's some kind of like brush and, and things that you're able to kind of like, you know, twigs and leaves have fallen on the roof and you're kind of able to pull them over yourself a little bit too to, to help you out a bit. Um, and while uh, Granny and Taryn, uh, both of you are... Taryn, you're perhaps not quite as hidden as you were hoping you would be there, uh, but the uh, the incredible stealth of Throom and your group group check with his critical <laughs> success, uh, Granny, you go to kind of like step on a um, you go to like step on a loose board uh, and it's about to just like snap and break and make a bunch of noise in the cabin, uh, and Throom's there kind of like uh, Throom's there and kind of like puts your foot away and is like no don't. Don't stand on the squeaky board. That's going to completely give us away. Throw him, you're on the ball extremely. And up in the trees, uh, you find plenty of cover as well, uh, Valdius. And the night um, slowly begins to come up. It moves from uh, it moves from the afternoon, the late afternoon, into twilight, uh, and is getting closer and closer to uh, dusk. And as your stakeout continues eventually you begin to hear a rustling moving forward in the forest. It's happened a couple of times now. There's been deer and bears and things that have kind of wandered about, but not anything conspicuous. Um, but from the side, lumbering into the space, you see first the silhouette of a creature. Large, uh, kind of very top-heavy, it looks like. Broad shoulders, wide arms, moving down to fairly scrawny and almost spindly look. Not spindly, but almost human-sized legs. Uh, and it's continuing with its very large arms kind of dragging behind it. It is stepping, standing upright, perhaps a little bit hunched, but standing upright, walking on two feet. Uh, and it begins kind of lumbering into the uh, lumbering into the clearing. As it gets closer, it kind of looks around a little bit. All of you tighten, duck down, make sure you're completely behind whatever cover that you have. Uh, and as you uh, as you do so, <laughs> um, the thing walks closer. It walks closer uh, from within the cabin. Uh, you aren't able to see it, Vadius, um, and. Perhaps you as well, Taryn, who are on top of the roof. Uh, the two of you have the best view. Uh, it has, its body is entirely covered in thick brown fur. It has very large uh, fangs. Uh, it looks gorilla-like in the way the teeth to like kind of teeth coming down. Um, and those are currently bared. It just kind of walks with an open mouth uh, as it steps forward and it looks down at the moose here. Um, you see it walk over to the moose, uh, and it steps out and begins to kind of reach down with those massive arms, uh, as they kind of, like, move out to the side. It's almost a little awkward, uh, in the way it's being handled. All of a sudden, it steps forward, and its foot gets caught on the snare. Uh, and very easily, the snare begins to wrap around it. Um, the creature is, uh, the creature needs to make a dexterity saving throw? Correct. Oh, I did not I meant to make that public. Oh, it, uh, it failed, uh, in, to the, to the, uh, succeeded to the GM, GM layer, but it failed in reality, unfortunately for it, uh, as it steps onto the, uh, uh, it steps onto the stair, the snare, and all of a sudden it wraps around the creature's legs, and, uh, it just pulls and, uh, drags it, like, it drags it upwards, right? Uh, is it like a tree snare, hanging upside down kind of snare? How does this work? Yeah, it's hanging upside down, three feet above the ground, and it's restrained. 
Uh, all right. Yeah. So all of a sudden, and it makes uh, and it can make a dexterity, dexterity saving throw at the end of its turn to kind of pull itself uh, up. Yeah. All right. Uh, and as it does, you just kind of hear. Um. Uh, as all of a sudden it's flung up into the air and is now like swinging back and forth. Uh, the arms are flailing slowly and, and kind of uh, semi-wildly uh, as it's struggling to get out of the snare and it's just hanging upside down. Uh, I would like you all to roll for initiative. music stuff. Ooh. Can you all hear me still? Yes, I can hear you. My roll yes. 20 seems to be bugging out on me. I second. can hear. I do hear music still. Uh, okay, cool. I hear birds uh, chirping. Uh, very good. I, I refreshed and all seems to be well again. Uh, in that case, the first to act is actually you, Terran. Um, the creature gets <laughs> caught up into the snare. What would you like to do? Well, uh, it's better to secure it now while it's vulnerable, so I'll dart forward and throw my net towards it. Okay. Um, is that an attack roll? It is. You have advantage. Unfortunately, the eight still misses. Uh, as you go to throw the net, it's kind of dr uh, dangling and, and swinging back and forth uh, on the rope hung from the tree, uh, and it's unable to get kind of a, a clear shot uh, as it kind of ducks down. Um, and that's going to bring us to Big Hand's turn, who's going to make another dexterity saving throw to break out. It's not like strength or athletics or something. Yeah, it's dexterity. Oof. Yeah. Not his strong suit. Oh, wait, maybe it is his strong suit. Big Hand kind of uh, is like stretching. You see them wriggling their legs and they uh, eventually the uh, break out from the inside of the snare. It spreads out just enough and they fall down the three feet with a kind of an oof. Um, they stand up, uh, and then, um, they kind of, like, look around, and they begin to run away, uh, arms kind of dragging on the ground behind them, uh, which is going to, I believe, bring us next to... Granny! The turn is yours. What would you wish to do? Granny's version of Chill Touch, which is Chill Mitten. Chill Mitten, uh, 17 is absolutely going to hit. Uh, for three points of necrotic damage, uh, as you strike into the, uh, as you strike into Big Hand here, um, you watch as, um, you don't get the same kind of, like, visuals, it doesn't seem to, like, drain Big Hand all that much. Um, Big Hand definitely slows, but they, but they look relatively unfazed. Um, but they do kind of, like, slow down their movement a little bit, and there's something kind of, like, grunt that comes, uh, from them. Anything else on your turn? Um, do you want to, like, also, you're in the house right now and Big Hand's running away. Are you going to pursue or are you going to kind of stay back uh, a little bit away in the house? Uh, I'm going to stay where I am. Granny doesn't move fast, so... All right. Um, in that case, that's going to bring us to Vadius. Uh, Vadius, what do you wish to do? Uh, I wish I wish to uh, throw the net down on the. Um, uh, well, his is actually it's like a big handled butterfly net. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm sorry. Okay, no, then I, I'm gonna swoop down and uh, I'm used to chasing down criminals, so I'll see what I can do here. All right. Uh, this is a um, strength based weapon. Yep. Uh, just go ahead and make an attack with the uh, using your strength, and uh, you can add your proficiency bonus because I would say this is a simple weapon. All right. Uh. I don't have anything off. Oh, I'll just do an athletics because I'm proficient in it. Great. That will be the same. Oh! oh. So, critical uh, character? Yeah, absolutely. Um, the uh, the attack deals uh, one damage <laughs> just because that's just what it does. Uh, but they are once again restrained uh, as you kind of reach down and uh, wrap the net around them. They're held in place. They're thrashing against the outside of it. Uh, and as you're looking at it, the, the net, the weave on this appears to be made of a very tough fiber. Uh, as much as the body kind of wriggles and squirms around, it doesn't seem to be putting that much dent on the net as you stand there holding it. It's more your own strength trying to like Keep holding on to it. That's the issue. Um, anything else on your turn, Bodius? Uh, no. I mean, if, if I'm if I'm having to brace to you know hold on to this thing or to 
you know, uh, I'm I'm ready to to make the arrest. And uh, you dig yourself in as best you can uh, as we move next to Thrum. Thrum, just to try and help ensure that Big Hand doesn't get away, kind of steps out and t- steps out of the cabin and towards Big Hand a little bit and sends a spell his way. to make a a strength saving throw? Is that what this is? Yes. Uh, Big Hand's pretty... Well, I was going to say he's pretty good at those, but apparently he's not very good at this. Uh, (laughs) As tangling roots kind of whip up and kind of crash and and go around his legs and even his big hands, which are also kind of touched down to the ground. Um, And at the end of your turn, uh, that's going to bring us to Rusty, uh, who's going last, who... (laughs) Uh, kind of runs out of the uh, the cabin behind you with his camera. He's going, all right, we got him, we got him. <laughs> I'm going to prove all those fools. Uh, and runs over and uh, begins just snapping pictures uh, frantically as he's approaching. Uh, you see the, like, the, um, the sheets coming out of the camera just like falling on the ground behind him uh, as he <laughs> snaps more and more pictures, gets around close. Hold him right there. Uh, as we move back to the uh, the top of the initiative, which is going to be you. Uh, was it Taryn or Granny? That was for Taryn. I believe you were first. Yes. Um, Taryn is going to run up again, kind of skittering down the side of the building to approach. And instead of throwing another net, he's going to move uh, around to, like, in front of where the big hand was going to move as if a uh, visual signal that that path is just completely closed off now um, okay uh, just kind of creating a, creating a wall with your own body in a way uh, yes. and uh, big hand will go big hand is struggling uh, to kind of break out um, big hands restrained uh, but with his big hands, he is going to reach out, um, not having much else to do, and just try and just smack at you, Vadius. It's a 14 to hit. And this is because of my, uh, my uh, character. Oh, he had, he had disadvantage anyway, because he was restrained. Um, yeah. Uh, all right, yeah, he goes to smack at you, but it just kind of harmlessly blazes against it. And honestly, it didn't feel like it had all that much power behind it. Uh, as we move next to, um, as we move next to your turn, Granny. Uh, you know Granny is going to use Pinacet Sickness on the creature and try and poison. Oh, Jesus. Uh, 18's definitely gonna hit. Um, they're gonna make a constitution saving throw, which they, oh god, <laughs> big hand fails. And now they are poisoned. Um, and you hear Big Hand, um, the teeth are still kind of bared in that same sinister snarl, uh, but you just kind of hear, <laughs> What are you doing? What do you do to me? Um, you are poisoned. Uh, that's going to bring us next initiative to Vadius. Uh, what? What? You you spoke. You're not an animal. Let me go. Let me go. No. Uh, and yeah. Uh, insight. Go ahead and make an insight check. Um, they appear to be uh, in a lot of uh, a lot of pain and very scared. Uh, and, I mean, they meant it when they said they weren't an animal. Hold still. I will free you. We'll figure out what happened. <sighs> some sort of magical assault, maybe. Start listing off some crimes, and I'm gonna actually let him out of the net. Uh, all right, you, you release the net. Uh, they're still kind of, like, tangled up. Uh, uh, they're still kind of, like, tangled up in the vines underneath. Uh, and as you let the net go, Rusty kind of calls out, What are you doing? You're gonna let him go! Uh, who's kind That's of not your talk. Um, what do you mean it's not my target? Uh, look at um, look at him as we move to through. We want to do through. Is there er, like a second 
pathway that seems open. Um, he's pretty well surrounded at this point by everyone, uh, but you could kind of get... Um, there's actually probably one side. I think there's one of you on each side of him right now, so you could get the one, like, open spot, because you're over where Granny is, so you can go opposite Granny. Yeah. Thrum is going to fill that last spot and <clears throat> sort of take his take out his staff and cast Chalele on it and just kind of hold it ready in case he, in case he gets attacked to smack back. Um, all right, you ready in action to Shillelagh, um as we move next initiative to Terran? Please, uh, calm down, sir. If, if you'll just stand still and not run off, I'm sure we can get all of this sorted out. And uh, as Terran says that, he's going to walk up and cure wounds this individual. All right. Uh, and as you kind of reach out and, and make physical contact, um, you grab big hands right on his broad shoulders that lead down to his very large hands, uh, and your hand sinks into the arm a little bit. Uh, and as that happens, um, you come to the realization there are human arms that seem to be inside of his arms. And as it moves to Big Hand's turn, uh, their big hands kind of reach up uh, and uh, kind of reaches over it and pulls at the side of him, and the two arms just fall off, uh, revealing two human arms underneath, and then the head kind of uh, hands reach up and pull off what appears to be a mask. Uh, as standing before you looks like just a very kind of like scared human who goes I'm not I'm not big hand I'm not really big hand I just was wearing a costume I'm sorry please can you get rid of these vines why are you traipsing around the forest at night in a big hand costume yeah that's what I'd like to know what are you doing out here are you thinking uh, and he goes, oh, it's good. It's just good. People, you know, have stories. And uh, if they come to my tavern, people, more people come to my tavern if they think big hands around here. Because they got all sorts of folks that just come down to this part of the Wilderwood, which no one would ever come to, because they think they're going to find big hand. And so I thought if I came out here and some people saw me and there were some stories, I would, you know... I, I could bring up the, the big hand legend, uh, and more people would come to my tavern. So what you're saying is you're an idiot. No. Well, wouldn't you think that at some point some hunters or adventurers would come looking to try and find this big hand thing and either capture it or kill it? I mean, I just, if not, you're an idiot. I guess I didn't think it all the way through. I thought it was harmless. Uh, and uh, at this point, Rusty goes, well, what about all them, uh, <clears throat> uh, what about all them tracks over in the mud over there? Isn't it obvious he made them himself? Yeah, I, I had the costume, so I just pressed the hands into the, into the mud. It was pretty easy. He goes, you've been doing that all over the place around here. Yeah, I have. And uh, Rusty kind of like takes a picture of him on the camera. Uh, kind of like, you know, he, he, he closes it, uh, closes it down, look kind of dejected. And he goes, you put a, certainly put a lot of work into this thing. I guess you're a big hand fan too. How'd you do those, uh, how'd you do those ones up in the trees? Now that was an impressive one. Um, and he kind of looks over and goes, what do you, what do you mean the ones in the trees? The branches were broken. I saw it with my own eyes. All of them. Also, um, how exactly did you take down that moose? I, I, I didn't do anything in the trees, and I couldn't, I couldn't kill a moose. And... Which means you're an even bigger idiot than before. There really and, was a creature out here. And as he says that, you hear... In the distance, you hear the sound of a tree kind of fall. Another heavy footfall approaches. I would like you all to roll for initiative.
As you hear these heavy footfalls and the sound of a tree kind of coming down, um, reaching out high above you, you can see what looks like a pair of massive hands. Nothing quite so cartoony as the costume that you were just looking at. Uh, a much bigger, broader, more evenly proportioned creature covered in dark brown hair, uh, kind of reaches and tr crashes down into the clearing. You can see its face uh, in what is now approaching real darkness, only barely illuminated, is uh, Neanderthal-like, a furrowed brow kind of leaning forward as it smacks down into the space and looks around at the four of you and lets out a low howl. Uh, all of you kind of hear him coming, but he didn't seem to be aware of you. You all have a surprise round as Big Hand, the real Big Hand, crashes into the clearing. Uh, I, I'm up first. The, uh, yes, uh, and let me get Big Hand's initiative in here. My apologies. Yep, the first to act is you, Vadius. What do you wish to do? Oh, Big Hand's just last anyway. Um... All right, what I'd like to do, especially if we have a surprise round, uh, I'm not too good in the dark. Uh, what I'd like to do is uh, grab a bunch of torches uh, with all my limbs out of my uh, pack and uh, light them. And I'd like to start uh, planting them around uh, the area that this is taking place. Um, However many of those actions, that's my intention. Grab several torches with my limbs, light them yeah. and start planting them around the battle. Yeah, absolutely. I think you can get, um, you can get enough to have, like, the entirety of the clearing, I think, is lit by the end of your round. It's about four torches. Uh, as you're just, you light them all in one fell swoop, plant them into the ground, uh, as you run around the clearing. Um, but yeah, the space around you, I would say, is now lit as we move next initiative to... Granny. Uh... Granny's gonna cast Chill Mitten on the on the real big hand. Um, Chill Mitten. All right, the hand kind of reaches up and grabs onto the shoulder of uh, uh, grabs onto the shoulder of the real big hand, which kind of looks down at it, but it does not seem to affect him at all. Anything else on your turn, Grammy? Uh, Grammy? no. <laughs> um, the Spectral Mitten does nothing to big hand. Yes, uh, as that's going to bring us to. Thrum, what do you want to do, Thrum? There's a big head. How, do I see anything attached to the big hand? And if so, how big is the creature attached to the big hand? Um, you don't see a creature attached to the big hand. Uh, this is definitely a large creature. Its hands are also decidedly large, although not as car cartoonishly overproportioned as the person that you just saw. Hmm. It's just one very big, very real, almost Yeti-like in its proportions. Uh, so definitely going to get rid of the concentration on the entangle from before. Uh, if that hadn't expired while we were... Uh, what is the time on that? It's a minute. Yeah, that would be, that would be gone. Okay. And... I... <clears throat> And instead, I will send some fairy fire towards the big hand. All right, and they're going hand. to make a dexterity saving throw, correct? Yes. 16? That, well, that is a successful save. Yes, uh, you go and light the area with ghostly fey fire. Uh, however, big hand is not affected. Uh, as the flames kind of go to catch him and light him up, uh, he ducks out of the way. Anything else on your turn? Uh, nope. That's All right, that, that's going to bring us to that Terran. What do you wish to do, Terran? Um, sir, I would highly advise that you run back to that cabin and stay inside. Uh, are you speaking to Rusty the, or to uh, the imposter? Okay. Uh, he kind of looks at you and goes, <laughs> okay. And uh, Terran's going to throw out another net. That's the real big hands. <laughs> uh, 14 will hit. Uh, is a net able to restrain a large creature? Yes. 
All right. Um, is he restrained? Is that how that works? Um, I think so. Yes. Uh, a large creature, a large or smaller creature, hit by a net is restrained until it is freed. It's All a right. DC 10 strength check to break out or dealing five slashing damage to the net. Okay. And Terran's going to immediately retreat towards the cabin. <laughs> All right, you duck back into the cabin. Uh, at this point, you see um, uh, you see Rusty kind of like fiddling around with their camera as they're like backing up, like this, this is it, this is it, boys. Uh, and is kind of like hurriedly taking a picture as he backs away, kind of intimidated by the uh, the creature's overwhelming presence here. As we move back around, it would be Big Hand's turn. Oh, and the imposter runs into the cabin, absolutely. Um, Big Hand, that was, this is his turn on which he's surprised. So that brings us to the top of the initiative. And it's your turn once more, audience. Um, okay, so no one's holding the net. It, the net is just thrown uh, the on The net's top just of kind of thrown on top of him, yeah. It, can I, I guess, convolute the net in order to, like, impose disadvantage, kind of like an aid in getting free of the net? Um, you would have to be in melee of Big Hand to do this, but you could do this. Yeah, I, I'm fine with that. Okay. I, we're, uh, we're, we're only here for the pictures. No need to harm the wildlife. Um, all right. Uh, you go over and you're going to essentially try and impose disadvantage. I'll, I'll say that this is kind of like a, a reverse health action. I'll just, I'll give it yeah. to you on this one. Um, and uh, anything else on your turn? You have bonus action? Um, no, nothing that I need to do. All right. Uh, Granny. What's the play? Granny? Oh, uh, Chill Mitten again. All right, send it out. Seven, unfortunately, again misses. Uh, your Chill Mitten flies to catch uh, Big Hand, uh, but it again harmlessly off of Big Hand's hair. Anything else? Uh, no, Granny's just gonna continue knitting her mittens to throw at Big Hand. <laughs> these, are live, <laughs> these are live being knit uh, as we move next to Throom. Throom, what do you want to do? Uh, Thrum is going to step up into melee range and cast a spell into his free hand. And then take a swing at the... And then take a swing at... <clears throat> big hand, yes. Back away. 20 is absolutely going to hit. Ooh. 14 fire damage. Nice. 14 points of fire damage. The uh, the flaming scimitar kind of uh, curves upwards and cuts across Big Hand's section, who lets out a uh, kind of a howl and, and, and steps back a little bit, but is unable to move too much. It's currently they're tangled up in this net. Um, Anything else on your turn? That's a melee attack, correct? Yes, that's action, bonus action, movement, so. All right. Uh, in that case, that's going to bring us to uh, Terran. What do you want to do? Well, I didn't realize we were going to harm the creature. I may as well get ready for this combat. It's unavoidable now. He will cast Hunter's Mark All on... Right. Big hand. And buy it, like ready to pick up his crossbow and fire it once. Alright, go ahead and make an attack roll. Uh is that actually a twelve? Oh, it's the archery bonus. Okay, yeah. Um twelve hits. Roll damage. Uh four a total of 12, 12 to hit, 12 damage. Uh, the crossbow bolt <laughs> fires into Big Hand, who <laughs> lets out kind of another kind of low grunt as he takes the hit, uh, and it passes now to Big Hand's turn. Uh, and Big Hand is going to uh, use his big hands uh, and make an attack each against um, you guys. 
who are holding on to him. Uh, and with his first big hand, he's going to come after you, Vadius. That's a... Uh, you should not have advantage. You should have disadvantage. That's a 12, which I think misses you. Uh, and then that's going to be against you, Throom, which is a 14. Does that get you, Throom? Nope. Ah! Uh, with his big hands, he goes out to reach on to both of you, uh, but you kind of batter him away as he's kind of, like, struggling in this space. Um, and that's all for his turn. Uh, that's going to bring us to the top of the initiative. Vadius, what do you want to do? Oh, wait, no, I'm sorry. It wasn't Vadius this time. It was... Who was the top of the... Oh, wait. Yeah, it was you. Vadius, what do you want to do? Well, I, I'm top, but wasn't the... The hunter was at the bottom. Is he doing anything? Uh, yeah, he's, like, just running around trying to take pictures, um, is what he's doing right now. He's still just taking pictures. All right. I'm holding under the net. I'm looking over. Do you have enough pictures? We're not here to poach. We're here for pictures. Uh, and he kind of looks at you. Yeah, hold it a little bit longer. I gotta make sure I get every angle. Uh, and he's saying, if you can, uh, if you can keep him entertained for a, two more rounds, is kind of what he's implying. <laughs> Very well understood. Uh, looking at the others, we're not here to kill. At least just help restrain. And I'll continue. I'll continue holding the net. All right. Uh, as you kind of try and hold it down. Um, I think uh, I think a more um, realistic way to do this is why don't you just try and make a this is you kind of trying to grapple him using the net as kind of leverage. So why don't you make me an athletics check um, to grapple and I'll, and I'll give you advantage because the net's kind of helping you here. Um, which yeah, you got him you got him grappled in addition to the uh, the net which is restraining him. Hold on with all four of my arms. All right, uh, as you you hold it back, uh, we bring it next to Granny. What do you want to do, Granny? Granny has decided to try and put Big Hand to sleep. Um, 23, uh, you cast a sleep out in the, uh, the Big Hand area. Um, there are, um, there are allies around, like, on either side of Big Hand, so just know that you, uh, will also affect these allies with that. Uh, yeah, uh, okay. I figured. Okay, uh, how much health do each of you have? Um, Vadius and through more than more than sleep, so I have I'm not falling asleep. I'm at uh, 27. Big Hand has more hit points than 23, so unfortunately, Vadius, you fall asleep uh, as the pff, sleep kind of takes you over. You oh, fall backwards and uh, kind of land into a gentle slumber, uh, no longer grappling Big Hand. Uh, as we move next in the initiative to Throom. What do you want to do, Throom? Throom will... Uh, Throom will take up the mantle of trying to keep the... <clears throat> of trying to keep Big Hand grappled and restrained with the net and his trunk. All right, go ahead and make me an athletics check with advantage. 18. Oh, big hands rolling terribly. Woof. Um, as you, yeah, you now, you are now the one kind of holding on to the net here uh, and keeping big hand in place. Uh, and unless you have a bonus action, that's going to bring us on to Terran. Uh, nope. Terran, what do you want to do? Terran will huddle, er, hurriedly scuttle over towards the uh, Vadius and nudge him awake. All right, use your action to shake Vadius awake. Um, are you going to step back and provoke an opportunity attack? You're going to stay in Big Hand's uh, reach. I'm up here now. I may as well stay up here. All right, <laughs> as it's a big pile around Big Hand, it gets to uh, well, it's, uh, first our our gear. Uh, our dear hunter here, who kind of runs around and grabs another action shot of Big Hand uh, from the side, the torchlight kind of providing enough in the uh, the growing dusk. Uh, Big Hand is going to whip out, uh, and this time... Uh, and the fiery you, scimitar. Uh, you with disadvantage through him. Uh, nine will miss. Uh, yes. And he's going to go for you again, since you're grappling him. That's a 14. Still misses. Oh, 14's going to miss. Woof! Big Hand's having a hard time. Uh, as uh, Big Hand... 
continuing to kind of like roll around and, and grab onto things. Um, that's gonna bring us to the top of the initiative, Vanius. You're awake. Just did I get knocked out? Uh, I'll look over, see that a, a fellow Therian. Uh, or wait, no, was it Thrum? I'm sorry. Thrum, ha Thrum has the grapple. The Therian woke you up. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Um, give a uh, give a uh, a Therian fist bump. You know, the one with one of her extra arms that only we can do. Um, and <laughs> uh, <laughs> classic. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, and then I will, uh, I will, Froom is maintaining the, the, um, the grapple. Uh, I will, I guess, aid Throom in not getting hit or, or, like, to impose disadvantage if Big Hand attacks Throom for holding the, the net. Okay. Um, so you're, um, or I guess this would also be like a dodge action almost. Yeah, I, okay. I, I'm sorry if I'm if I'm confusing some fourth ed mechanics in with fifth ed. But, um, yeah, well, it's, uh, it's, he's kind of already at disadvantage anyway because he's restrained. So. Oh, oh, okay, that, that's true. Then, um, no, yeah, I, I'm helping. <laughs> All right, yeah, you uh, you help. Uh, I, I, I don't want to injure this thing, so. Yeah, um, I gotcha. Then, oh, then you know what? You know what I can do uh, if he's already restrained and whatnot. I really want this guy to finish taking the photo so we can let this thing go. Can I just like zoom over and help like like st uh, sturdy uh, sturdy his hands so he can take clear shots and just or yeah I can even oh you know what I can can I lift him in the air to get an aerial shot maybe that's like the clutch shot for him yeah and absolutely still and out of harm's way that, that you can definitely do uh, okay, get it for I'll his for his final shot which will be next round or the end of this round uh, you go over and just fly him up uh, you can't get him too high you get him about 15 feet up though which is looking down on. Uh, on big hand here. Um, and he's kind of like, all right, this is gonna be the money shot as we move next initiative to Freddy. Freddy, what would you do? Uh, you know what? We were hired to get proof that this creature exists Photographer already has a couple pictures at this point. Granny's gonna run away. All right, Granny's bucking, uh, bucking and running uh, as we get to the next initiative, which is going to be uh, right, right, kind of at your side. Uh, you can see running a little bit ahead of you uh, is the guy of the fake big, Bigfoot costume or the big, uh, big hand costume with the arms like just kind of like under his actual arms, just dragging behind him. Uh, as we move to Thrum, what do you want to do, Thrum? Uh, definitely going to keep holding on, and uh, yeah, I'm just gonna keep holding on to him and not letting him go. All right, um, you don't have to do anything for that. He's already you already got him. Yep. Uh, and that's going to bring us to Darren. Um, I would like to give. I would like to use the help action to give him advantage on keeping the grapple whenever, if the if yeah. the big hand tries to break out. Use a help action, absolutely. Um, which is going to bring us to uh, big hand himself, who is going to once more try and grab onto you. That's a twenty-three through him. That one will hit. He uh, he grabs you into his. <laughs> big hand, uh, and as soon as he gets you, you find yourself lifted up off the ground, uh, and uh, he's gonna try and throw you as well. Uh, but you are also already, like, holding on to him. So <laughs> yeah, you to make me... I will let you make me a strength saving throw, because this is a weird situation, because <laughs> you would be restrained by him. Actually now. grappled. But yeah, so make me a strength saving throw to not just get chucked by Big Hand right here, who seems to have a pretty impressive strength to just pick you up in one hand. 14. Uh, the DC on that, actually, that's barely going to succeed. He goes to just throw you, and as as he moves you, you don't like have him, you don't have him grappled anymore in the sense that like you're in the air now. So he's got you like held off the ground. So you're not holding him down, but you're also not letting go. And you're still just held on to big hand uh, as he goes to pull you away. Um, 
and he's got another hand, uh, and that's coming after you, Terran. Still a disadvantage. It's a 12. That does not hit. All right. He goes to grab onto you as well. He's still got you through him as uh, it passes now to... Uh, as it passes now to Rusty Pockets, who uh, looks down and goes, snaps another picture. You see the, uh, the photo come out. He kind of grabs it, stuffs it in his pocket, uh, and looks at you, Vadios, who's carrying him, like, all right, fly us out of here. We're, get, we're getting home, going home. We got what we needed. Woo-hoo! Um, and that's, uh, that is all for his turn as we move to the top of the initiative. Um, I, well, I guess I have a question for y'all. Um, do you guys let Big Hand go? Do you retreat? Well, I don't think I can retreat. Well, right now until you can't. Big Hand, until Big Hand lets me go, so. Oh, that's, a, that's a very good point. Vanius, what do you want to do? Um, I am going to uh, set, uh, I'm going to fly over uh, to the edge of the grove, set down the photographer uh, so he's out of harm's way, use a bonus action to dash over, and then I will attempt to help uh, help the uh, uh, help to escape the grapple. Do you have action. um? Do you have bonus action dash? Are you uh, level yeah, two? that's a level two as a rogue. Oh, I thought um, I got confused. Um, what? All right, yeah, you go over and you get ready to help him break out of the grapple. The help chain continues. Yeah, I was I was just thinking you were level one for some reason in the back of my mind. Um, uh, I the, would have, but I floated one from the Carnival of Souls. Yeah. And that's why I kind of had it in the backstory, so. Yeah, that's why I was uh, uh, thrown off and realized. Uh, that's going to bring us then, in that case, to Granny. You're already booking it, Granny. You're continuing to do so, I assume. Yep, Granny's going to continue to book it. Through the moment of truth, can you break out? Yeah, let's try to... Let's try to break out, I guess. <laughs> so, what would that be? Uh, I'm sorry, uh, athletics or acrobatics, your choice. All right, and I believe I was helped on this. Yep, you have advantage. 15 is one more than he needed. Uh, as you kind of uh, kind of turn and, and spin within the grasp of Big Hen, uh, eventually his fingers loosen. Uh, he lets you go. You fall to the ground. You want to uh, run, of, run away. Yes, let's start retreating. All right, um, you duck away. Um, well, that will provoke an opportunity attack. You cool? Yeah, I'm fine with that. All right, um, he critically fails. He goes to grab onto you uh, and uh, he's kind of still caught up in the net and is unable to quite get you. Karen, you are alone in front of Big Hand as Thrum and everyone else has successfully retreated. It's been a wonderful occasion. Salune, bless you. Good night. <sighs> and uh, Taryn is just going to start bolting. All right. Uh, you run away. A uh, Big Hand... Um, reaches up on his uh, turn and <laughs> snaps the net between his uh, fingers and kind of lets out a uh, lets out a terrible howl. You hear him kind of run over and <laughs> grab that huge moose with one of his big hands and uh, kind of place it over his shoulder uh, and <laughs> runs a few steps behind you. You can see the heavy footsteps uh, kind of following the four of you and uh, along with your uh, your companion Rusty Pockets as he lumbers in pursuit, uh, but eventually gives up the chase uh, and leaves you off into the night. Um, Rusty Pockets kind of finally catching his breath some time later, kind of calls out, we, we, we done did it good. We, uh, well, I don't think anyone in town when they see these, he's got a stack of pictures in his hand, are going to, uh, well, I don't think any of them are going to be questioning any of my big hand stories again. Um, yeah, uh, and you guys have kind of retreated from the woods. At this point, it's night. Uh, uh, a full moon is sort of uh, beaming down and casting quite a bit of light into the space. Your respect for nature is admirable. Yeah, well, I, uh, I don't know if I'm going to be out here much longer. I bet you... Uh, well, as much as I do enjoy my cabin in the woods, I'm, I'm getting up there, and, well, if I sell some of these pictures, I, I bet you I can, well, live on a pretty... And he kind of looks down at his pictures. 
and you see his face just kind of slack a little bit. And as he fans them out in front of them, it seems that a lot of them, the lens cover was still on. He'd put it back on after the first Bigfoot turned out to be a phony. Uh, and well, some of them, there's just like some glare from the torches on some of them and, and like the light of, of the moon. Some of them, they're off angle and the, there's a lot of motion blur. And, one of them, the, one of them, the camera was backward. Uh, and as he kind of looks over the pictures and looks up to the four of you, well, and he hands each of you t uh, 100 Bartholomew bucks. There's always, there's always next time. Want a cup of coffee, always... anyone? Another I still, day. I still say the person trance around out there in the big hand costume was an idiot. Uh, Not even knowing there was a real big hand out there. And he, Could have gotten uh, hurt. <laughs> and he, uh, he kind of like is still there next to you and he goes, I'm sorry, I... <laughs> I didn't know there was a real big hand uh, as he just takes the abuse. Uh, and with that, uh, all of you have been successful in escorting Rusty Pockets on his big hand quest. Uh, you've each gained uh, 100 Bartholomew books, as I said, and you've all gained one point of experience. Uh, and that's going to conclude our first adventure tonight. Thank you all very much for playing. Thank um, you very much. Thanks. It was a lot of fun. Uh, very fun. I would like to shop real quick if that's okay that absolutely 10 out of 10 would play again <laughs> and was that was going to be uh my next question for you all so in that case you eventually work your way back to bartholomew's shop as you enter you hear the familiar if you need a magic item you know where to stop just head out it's your only choice to bartholomew's shop um uh, 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 greetings adventurers uh, welcome I uh, trust your day uh, in or an evening in the woods was successful. Well, to as successful as some it could have been. That's good. Um, well, we saw a big hand. Yes, uh, I have always believed that big hand is real, regardless of what everyone says. Um, were you able to snap a picture? Well, it would appear that many were actually snapped. Uh, very few were remotely successful. Also, I'm new here, and in studying the languages, there's a significant difference between saying you live in a cabin in the woods and perhaps a cottage in the forest. Um, I guess that's true, although I'm not sure I personally know what the difference is. Um, but, uh, well, uh, would any of you have anything you'd like to purchase? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, actually, I a have carrot, this yes. longbow I've been carrying with me. I haven't quite gotten around to using it yet, but I was hoping to get it uh, glamoured. Consider it... Wait, what do you want it to be? I would like it to... Uh... There is this old tale, uh, specifically in the court of Salune, about a uh, moonbow. And certainly this will only be a pale for simile, but I would like it to be enchanted to take on the appearance of the moonbow itself. I will style it as such. And with that, all of a sudden the bow just <laughs> explodes in the color of light, uh, and there's a gentle moonlit glow now coming from what looks to be, but you know is not a moonbow. Um, the... as well, could I have my armor upgraded and glamoured? Um, that also can easily be done. Uh, what are you moving up to now? I believe it's um, breastplate. Ah, okay, yes. Um, so medium armor uh, to a breastplate can be done. Uh, and with that, uh, your current, uh, your current, what is it, scale that you have right now? Yes. Uh, improves onto a breastplate uh, as it kind of spreads out into larger plating. Um, very good. Uh, anything else I can get for you, Taryn? Well, yes, I uh, just wanted it to be uh, glamorous to hold a forever polish so that no matter where I might stand, the faint image of the moon itself will reflect upon it. 
a wonderful aesthetic. And Bartholomew kind of rubs his hand over it, and you see as um, not in the bright lights of Bartholomew's shop, but as you step out later, uh, even though the moon is behind cloud cover, you can see just a pale reflection of the moon uh, still glinting off of your armor, wherever it is behind the clouds. Um, Thank you, sir. That will be everything for me. Uh, very good. Uh, anyone else have anything they wish to purchase at this time? No, thank you, but it is a pleasure to oh, meet you again you. for the first time. Yes, indeed. Uh, your uh, beginning here has been very successful. I look forward to seeing what you're able to do. I know your friends are valued adventurers here as well. Um, Grandheads, it sounds like you were uh, speaking up. Is there something that you require? Oh, uh, no, no, I don't require anything. And then hearing no more objections, we will be right back with our second adventure of the evening. Uh, stay tuned, everyone, and thanks so much for watching.